All right. I didn't know you liked cats. We got ourselves a Hellcat. <laughs> oh, man. So welcome everyone to what is a very, very exciting day, as you can probably tell, because in front of me is the newest car I've ever owned. In fact, for all intents and purposes, this is a new car. This is a 2021 Dodge Charger Hellcat widebody. And it's not just any Dodge Charger Hellcat widebody, it's my Dodge Char I'm doing the Doug DeMiro thing, aren't I? Now, I am super excited because I got this amazing automobile for free for zero dollars and uh, I'm real happy about it. Now this is not some automotive journalist thing where I get a press car for a weekend and then cry myself to sleep when I have to give it back. I got this car from Dodge, from the people that make it because apparently they're fans of my channel and they know that I build things from time to time. So if anyone were to try to buy one of these cars brand new, it would cost the better part of $90,000. Now I don't care who you are, cars like this don't just get given out. So there is a catch and the catch is I have to give it back, except not really. Now, unlike cars from the dealer, this thing was a pre-production example. Essentially what that means is this was made before the production run for testing purposes. Now, what that means for this car is that it's exempt from things like emissions. But what it also means is that it can't be titled, it can't be registered, and it can't be driven on a public road. Now, this presents a unique issue because Dodge now has cars that they have to get rid of. And honestly, these are really, really cool cars. So that's where I come in. Dodge told me that I could have everything in this car that makes a Hellcat a Hellcat. And in return, all I had to do was one little event. That's right, they invited me, me, <laughs> to this year's Motor Trend Presents Roadkill Nights powered by Dodge. Now, if you guys don't know what that is, then please do go check the link in the video description below because it is one of the most insane events for car culture there is. So you have Woodward Avenue in Pontiac, Michigan, which is a very iconic venue, and they close it off and do street legal drag racing. It's everything a 17 year old me would have dreamed of doing. So I got this awesome Hellcat, but I also got $10,000 for Motor Trend to modify it in any way I wanted to get it ready for drag racing on Woodward Avenue on August 14th in Pontiac, Michigan. Now, I am gonna be drag racing other YouTubers, influencers, social media people, I don't know what you call us, but just to give you guys an idea of who I'm going up against, it's gonna be Weston Champlin, Alex Taylor, and the boys from Throttle. And whoever wins that is gonna go up against Eric Malone from Fastest Cars of the Dirty South. That's a Motor Trend show you should definitely check out. So that makes me super duper excited because as you all know, I am very competitive when it comes to racing. Another thing I like to do is involve all of you guys in my decisions because to be honest with you, I don't know anything about this car. I've never even driven one. I just got this thing delivered and honestly, I'm a little bit scared. So you guys should let me know what you do with $10,000 to make this into a more track focused quarter mile racer. Now I just got this thing, but you guys can see some sneak previews of what I'm doing with it on my Dodge Garage page. Go check it out in the link in the video description below. Right now, I think we should go on a little bit of a tour of this car because I don't know anything about it and I really want to learn and this thing looks awesome and I'm, ju I'm just gonna geek out. I'm sorry if you guys don't like geeking out, we're gonna do that today. But the first thing I wanna show you is how this thing sounds. All right, cold start in a Hellcat. It's a little 
little raspy. It's like really rat. I don't think it's, I don't think that's supposed to happen. Hold on. Oh, so when I said that this is a pre-production car, I was not joking. Uh, there are no um, tailpipes here. So I think this is, this is our culprit and why she is a little bit on the raspy side. I think I have something to solve this. So it turns out that I went to a shop right next door that deals with like classics and performance cars and they had some Hellcat muffler tips. What are the odds of that? All the best cars need a little bit of wrenching just to get them going so they don't melt their own bumpers off, you know? Just makes it more exciting. You know, laying on a cold floor, it's actually kind of nice. I think this is, yep, that, that gets pushed in a little bit, maybe like that. Okay. I think we're good. Okay, now I think we can start it. Really hear what she sounds like. Much better. You know, you usually shouldn't rev an engine cold, but I'm fairly certain that this car has had its fair share of abuse. <laughs> that was 3000 RPM. <laughs> wow! So on a normal Hellcat, that engine makes 707 horsepower with a 2.4 liter supercharger. But I noticed that this is not the normal Hellcat supercharger. This is actually an engine from a red eye, which means that this is a 2.7 liter supercharger and this engine makes 797 horsepower, nearly 800 horsepower meaning that this car is one of the, if not the fastest four-door cars in the world with a top speed of over 200 miles an hour. <laughs> this thing is a literal rocket ship. Now, I think you'll agree with me when I say I've been talking too much about this car. It's time to get it out in the road and see how it drives. But there is one thing that may prevent us from finding the limits of grip with 800 horsepower. And that is the fact that it's currently raining. This is gonna be fun. This car came with two keys. One is the regular kind of normal one. And then there's a red one, which is the power key. This one unlocks all the power. So we're just gonna have a hold of the power today. Three thousand nine hundred and five miles. Something tells me those miles were not very kind to the car. Now we should actually let this thing warm up a little bit because I don't want to destroy anything on this drivetrain. Now this is, for all intents and purposes, just like the car that you would rent from any airport rental car company, except for the fact that it has more power than a Ferrari, more power than a Lamborghini. Like this is just insane oodles and oodles of power and they can give this to you if you have enough money to buy them now don't get me wrong i am very happy that this car exists 800 horsepower in anything especially something that has cooled seats and air conditioning and and four doors and five seats this is probably the best daily driver you can get if you're out for just crazy power. Now you guys probably don't wanna see all the features of this car. This does have heated and cooled seats. It has Alcantara wrapped steering wheel. It has a uh, sort of leather-ish lined dash with white stitching. It's generally a nice place to be. However, the thing you guys probably wanna see is this SRT menu. So you press this SRT button and immediately this goes into full attack mode. You can pick whatever you wanna do with this car. This is a more track oriented car. So you have your auto settings, your custom settings, sport and track. So if you put it into sport, you can see that the power is in red. 
Red means the most power you can get, which is 797. The transmission is in sport, meaning that it holds the gears a little bit more. It's still gonna be fine driving day to day, but it's just a little bit more sporty. Paddle shifters are on. You have these tiny little paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. Traction control is in sport, suspension is in sport, and steering is in sport. So it tightens all that up from the regular normal mode. Then you go into track and everything just turns red. It essentially turns all the nannies, all the electronic controls off, and lets you get 800 horsepower right to the rear wheels, which is, which is something, which is, which is something, especially on a day like today. Okay, now we are warmed up and ready to go. Now I am just going on a private side road, so this isn't going on any highway, nothing like that. And immediately, <laughs> immediately you can tell that there's something special underneath that hood. You hear the slightest, faintest whine just by pressing the throttle like 10%. I'm not gonna floor it in first gear, I'm just gonna roll into it and go. Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> Do you guys hear that? There's no way we're launching this car right now. This car has three 15 millimeter wide tires, front and rear, which means that hydroplaning is a real thing. Turn around real quick. All right, let's just try one launch. Just one tiny, tiny launch. Activate launch control right there. Okay, press brake and quickly apply full throttle. And go. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, we're not going anywhere fast with any sort of water on the road. So here's what happens if I'm in second and I just stab the throttle. Dodge, you have, <laughs> you have made a very fast car. Holy moly. So this also has a line lock mode, which is basically a burnout mode. It locks the brakes in the front and it lets the rear just do its thing. So you're holding the car and the rear is just giving you the most massive burnout ever. Now, I can't do it now because I mean, the, it's, it's just super wet outside, but I did do it yesterday. Oh. Well, all right. This thing is nuts. So it looks like I'm gonna have to wait for the sun to come out for this to do any sort of performance tests. But I want you guys to let me know what you would do if you had $10,000 and this car and you had to race it on a street. So I don't know what the final form of this car is gonna be, but I do have some really interesting ideas in my head and I'd love you guys to go along. So welcome everyone to the build part of my Dodge Charger Hellcat build. Now behind me is nothing. There's no car here, but the car is on its way to my shop right now. I'll tell you where it is in a second, but if you guys are new to this channel and this build, then definitely go check out the other video that I made, my reveal video, where I tell everybody that I am a special boy and I got a Dodge Charger Hellcat for free. I am jealous of myself. Now in that last video, I asked you guys what you would do if you had a Hellcat like I just got and $10,000 like Motor Trend just gave me. And I got a lot of good responses, but one guy had some really good ideas and he actually came to my shop and we talked in person. Now I recorded this whole interaction and I think you guys will like to see it. So let's go back in time when this car was still here so you guys can see who I'm talking about. And here he is, this is Tony Angelo. You might know him from Hot Rod Garage and Roadkill and a bunch of other stuff on Motor Trend, right? Yeah, absolutely. Plus also like drift racing and other things. Drift racing? Yeah. How much racing is going on in these drift events? It's more like style, isn't it? 
No, it's a lot of it's a lot. Well, there's a starts with a drag race, and then there's a sideways race, and then at the end, it's a looking cool race. A sideways race. That yeah. sounds like some Willy Wonka stuff. That's, okay. That's how, that's how Americans did it. Now, another thing Americans did is this car right here, and uh, I have no idea what to do with this car, but I think you might because you actually did race on Woodward Avenue, didn't you? I did. Yeah. These cars. The, the best thing you can do with these cars is get them lined up, hit the gas, and hold on because they are absolute animals in a straight line. So I raced Woodward uh, Roadkill Nights a few years ago. Um, I would say that I won. I'm gonna say I never lost. I beat Leah Pritchett <laughs> and Mike Musto and somebody else. And then in the fight, it was wet and raining and Dodge called it off. So I, I'm, I won, totally. Okay, so. Yeah. I love that that is, you can absolutely see the racer in you because, yeah. you know, it's just like a fisherman. It was this yeah, big, yeah. I swear. I didn't lose. Dodge called it off because I was too fast. <laughs> <laughs> what I think I'm going to do with this is not add any more power because 797 horsepower is a ton of power to go through any car. I'm just going to try to get more traction from what is already here. So what would you say, you know, maybe like wheels and tires, maybe suspension, something like that? Yeah, well, I would, you know, if I was getting serious, I would get a bunch of the weight out of it. Bunch of the weight, okay. Right? So completely gut the car. Yeah, it's with the, yeah, within reason, I would ditch a ton of this extraneous stuff, and then Woodward is like a scrambly garbage surface. Uh, it's it's inconsistent and it's uneven and it's just a right. It's a regular road. Mm -hmm. So I would do whatever I could to max my traction. I would probably swap wheels and tires, and then I would probably get really good at drive. You have it here. We I do. To, we had to show up and just hop in there. Uh -huh. uh, I would take it out and practice. Okay, so another thing that I want to do, maybe I'll, I'll just show you uh, an idea I have. So here's here's the wheel and tire, okay? Mm -hmm. And on an unprepped surface, this would just create a lot of tire smoke, but you can do, well, at least in my mind, I think what you can do is you can have a little garden sprayer just come out right here and you can put some VHT or pimp juice or oh, whatever. Oh, God, yeah. And that's what I think I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna be, when I do my burnout, and this can do very, very good burnouts, yes. I'm just gonna put a little bit, you know, a little puddle of of some, some sticky substance so I have a little bit of an edge. That sounds insane, and I think you should do it. <laughs> I've never heard, I've seen people spray bleach and water on their tires yeah. to do burnout stuff. I've never seen people try to go fast by spraying junk on their tires. I love it. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it can't it can't hurt. Actually, it can hurt, but I'm not gonna say it's gonna it's gonna hurt me. I think we have a good fighting chance if we do this and some weight reduction and then maybe some other bits and pieces. But uh, all right, well, thank you very much. Uh, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna be calling you a lot for a lot of this because I don't know anything about these cars. They are beastly awesome. Okay, awesome. Uh, I am now. Um, a little scared. I'm, I'm a little scared. So let's begin with this build. Now, the rules are really simple. They gave us $10,000, which is not a budget cap, but let's just say I don't want to spend a ton more money than I have to because it's a lot of money. And the $10,000 includes shipping. So shipping from here in Florida to Detroit and back is about $3,200. So right off the bat, I only have about $7,000 to play with on modifications. But one thing I always want to do is I want to put on a show for people. I want to make sure that people have fun while I'm doing whatever it is I'm doing at this event. So I wanted to make sure that the car looks as insane as it drives. So I got a color change and that's actually where the car is right now. Now I had a few options. Number one is painting the car, but that takes a long time and that takes a lot of money if you want to do it right. Number two is vinyl wrapping the car and that also takes a lot of time and a lot of money. It doesn't take as much time as a paint job, but it still is expensive on both parts. And number three is one that I opted to do, and that is Plastidip. Now, Plastidip is something that I'm really kind of well-versed in because the OGs amongst you will know that I took my old S500 down to Fonzie at Dip Your Car in South Florida, and we Plastidip my car, and it looked amazing. So I think for an event, it's gonna be really cool to have a complete color change for not much money, and and hopefully I don't blow my budget out because of it. So let's go back in time again so I can show you the entire process of plastic dip in a car from start to finish on a brand new Hellcat. And also, I didn't know that I was making this segue, so the intro to this next clip might be a little bit weird. So if you guys are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy it. And consider subscribing and hit that bell if you like what you see. Now I am 
in an industrial park, it is quite loud because people around here are doing a lot of work. Now, my car is, well, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. It's right here. So we are at Pro Dips in Orlando, Florida. And this is Eric, the owner. And we are about to transform the look of this car. How are we gonna do it? What we're gonna do is a few step process, but we got a short time frame, so we have to make sure we're fully focused on this thing. That's we right. Start it off with a nice car wash to make sure everything's nice, clean, to can't be contaminated. Mm -hmm. um, then we're gonna start with the prep work, and after the prep work, we're gonna actually install the product, and after that, we'll do the post, which is just cleaning anything up, mm -hmm. and hopefully have the keys and everything ready to go for my man's here by tomorrow. My good friend Fonzi sent me over these gallons so we have our safety cone orange, and I can't wait. It's gonna be basically this, right? Pretty much, pretty much exactly like that. Like the safety cone you see on the street. Bright, bright, bright. Definitely gonna make this car pop even more. It's already an aggressive car. Well, I mean, it's not It's not super aggressive. It's just gray. Like, it's, why, why would they ever make this car in gray? This doesn't make any sense to me. I'm not the guy that dodged, man. <laughs> I, you're absolutely right. We need the bright color to match what the car really is, man, because I'm in love right now. Well, I'm in love too, dude. This car is amazing. So you guys have already started before I got here. So you started doing some prep work uh, right here. You're just yep. masking all that yep. off. All we're doing right here is this little rubber piece. Mm -hmm. So, because when you close the door, you don't, you don't want it to be touching. So as you see here, it's coming, it's coming down. So things like that really matter because when you spray, it sprays on there. And then when you let it go, it's just gonna flap right over. Yeah. So you really don't see an edge or anything like that. So little things like that, I mean, we've been doing it for quite a while. So it takes us a while just to learn stuff like that. So but everybody I, should know what Plastid Dip is by now, yeah. right? Like you should know that this is a rubber spray that you put on. It's a rubberized coating, but you can spray it in any color you want. And it's also very kind of scratch resistant, but then you can just peel it off if you want to change the color. Absolutely. And you know, since we started back in what, 2011 till now, it's evolved so much more. Um, plastic dip would be our entry level uh, liquid wrap. Mm -hmm. But then we also have, you know, Pro Line, we have Auto Flex. But even if you want to even enhance plastic dip itself, we can mm -hmm. do something like dip armor over it, which makes it, you know, scratch resistant, gas resistant, and stuff like that. So it's really evolved and, and it's. If it went done right, mm -hmm. you can't even tell the difference sometimes between this or any other product out there. Well, I can't wait to see how this turns out. Uh, I'm definitely going to try to help uh, whatever you guys want to do. You guys have already taken out stuff here and made the car lighter, which which thank you very much. Go ahead and leave those off. Yeah, right? just leave those off. It's weight, it's weight reduction. It's fine. Uh, so we're going to do up the tape and then start uh, start dipping this car.
I don't think you're ready for this. <laughs> it is so crazy. Look at that. Oh yeah. So this is my new Hellcat wide body livery. And we have made it in the livery of Wrench Every Day Roadside Assistance. So the motto for Wrench Every Day Roadside Assistance is you're on your own because obviously you are the warranty, you are your own roadside assistance. So this entire dip job was done by the experts at Pro Dips. So shout out to them, link in the video description below. If you're in the Orlando area, please do go check them out. And all the vinyl stuff was done by Window Tint Z. Now this is what I'm talking about when I look at a Hellcat and I'm like, this needs a little bit more loudness to its color, to its appearance. This is super loud and the car is gonna be super rowdy. But now I should probably talk about the actual build. This is a build where I have to take this car and make it into more of a focused drag racer. And there's three things that you really need when it comes to drag racing. Number one, you want some weight reduction. So we're gonna work on that. Number two, you need some traction because we're gonna be on Woodward Avenue. And number three is usually power, but this thing has 800 horsepower. So the power is gonna be completely stock. 800 is more than what we'll need to win. But that third thing, I'm gonna replace it with an intimidation factor. I want these guys to see this car and shake in their boots. I don't, they're probably not gonna be wearing boots because it's summertime, but you know what I mean. So you guys might've noticed that behind the car is a bunch of parts that look like they're from a Charger Hellcat. That's because they are. This car was also half sort of kind of gutted so there's nothing in the trunk area and we took out all the back seats now the front seats i'll probably leave in because i don't know if motor trend is going to want to have a second person in there maybe jerry's going to come along i don't know but i want to leave two seats in there just in case that happens but since many hands make light work i got a friend to come help out because who wouldn't want to work on a big orange hellcat uh here's my friend shane hey everybody how you doing? I'm uh, doing good. That was a lot easier to take apart than I expected. I, I think so too. So this is really kind of beginner stuff if you're looking for a car to start to wrench on. Like it's, it's super easy. I think we use like three tools. Not a lot, but I also, I think you need to take that front seat out and put the milk crate in there. So there's some weirdness going on here because usually when you take out a bunch of weight from a car, the weight should go down. And if you notice, I have some scales right here and those scales wirelessly attached to this, which tells me the weight of the car. Now here was the weight of the car before we did any weight reduction to it. And now the weight of the car says it's 80 pounds heavier after we took out all of that stuff. How does that happen? Did you leave some tools in there? Yes, uh, they're, they're made of depleted uranium. Uh, we pulled a ton of stuff out and then went and looked at it. And... Yeah, it's, it's literally just 80 pounds more. So I think this is one of those rare cases where you take out stuff and it just gets heavier. So you, you stop taking stuff out. I think, I think we're good. I think we're good there. <laughs> what I think we're gonna do though right now is I'm gonna mount some new tires and some new wheels because these Pirellis are fine for making a ton of smoke, but they're not gonna be good for doing any sort of drag launches. So we're gonna take these off, take these wheels off, and I got something very special to put on this car. Okay, so look at these wonderful, wonderful boys. Oh, so these are, Hoosier drag radials, and they are DOT approved, which is exactly what we need because we're gonna be racing on a street. Everything has to be DOT approved. Now these are going not on the stock wheels, but these guys. This is an OEM wheel from a Dodge Demon. And yes, I have the fronts. We'll talk about those later, but these are 18 by 11 and these are 20 by 11. So honestly, I want a little bit more sidewall and we got that with these chunky guys right here. So what I have to do now is put these on these and then we're gonna put it on the car and see that they obviously don't fit. Actually, I really hope they fit. These things were very expensive. All right, so that didn't take long at all, right? Not long at all. <laughs> These tires and wheels took, no lie, probably four hours because for some reason, this tire would not bead on the wheel. 
And I know it seems like a very trivial thing, but we tried everything. We tried using a lot of lube. We tried ratchet strapping. We tried different flammable fluids put in there and then we lit it. In fact, here's a montage of everything we tried ending in success. That was big. That was big. That was, uh, that was an actual explosion. We're almost there. Look at this! Look at that side collapsed in. Still like <laughs> Do you hear I that? I love this. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is so much better. More arm hair. You, you, that's okay. You got you got plenty more. So would you look at that? It looks so so mean. I can't wait to get these things up to temperature. You see, the fitment is totally totally perfect. I mean, this is exactly what this car needs because, I mean, this is an OEM Dodge Demon wheel and we have actually a little bit oversized drag radials. So on the other side, we have the same thing. I am very, very happy that we got these on in time for the race, but there's one other thing that is gonna make this car even more rowdy. And uh, Shane has some. <laughs> 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 <Woo>! Yeah, baby. <laughs> We got NOS. All right, so let's talk about nitrous. This is a 10 pound nitrous bottle and it is currently full. It is basically extra power in a bottle. And the way it works is that there's magic pixies in there that go in the engine and uh, they make things real angry and then fire shoots out like it does in the movies and then the car goes faster. Now it actually has to do with essentially chemical supercharging. You see, you pack more oxygen into the cylinder and you introduce more fuel, meaning that there's more bang in your combustion. So it creates more power. Now, I told you that I don't need more power in this car and that is very true. So this is gonna be that third thing that I mentioned the intimidation factor because this is going to be a monster nitrous purge and uh, right now Shane is well he's already riv nutted some of the stuff here and uh, this is where the nitrous is gonna live and the nitrous purge is going to be coming out of the hood here and I can't wait for you guys to see this. This is gonna be a essentially a show car. It's gonna make big nasty burnouts. It's gonna have nitrous coming out of there. It's gonna have a nice little light show that I can't wait to show you later. And it's also gonna be super, super fast. Now, while Shane does that, I am going to work on some other parts of the car, namely the lights, where I'll show you how we're gonna turn this from a regular car into something a little extraordinary.
All right, so that looks really good. Uh, it is several hours later. Shane went home as he should because uh, nobody needs to be working in the middle of the night on cars like this. Uh, just so you guys know, this is what time it is. It's 3.32 and yes, it is August 11th. So I don't have a ton of time to put this thing together, but I have been making very, very good progress. So right off the bat, we see this thing. This is an awesome light show that's gonna happen on the top of the car. But where I spent a ton of time was back here. So we have our nitrous purge uh, set up. Actually, this could be a real nitrous system uh, if I ever wanna go that route. But over here is, uh, well, this is quite interesting. And I think this is gonna give me the edge. Now, power-wise, I know I'm probably gonna be low man on the totem pole. I know that uh, I have the least power out of everybody. But that doesn't matter because the name of the game is traction. And right here we have some pimp juice and pimp juice is really good track prep. So I'm doing something that some old racers did back in the day. And I'm not sure why they didn't do it anymore. I know this is a old street racers trick. So all I did was take a gallon of pimp juice and connect it to a 12 volt transfer pump. And then that goes into a T and that goes into the wheel wells. And I'm not sure if you can see it here. That little guy is gonna spray onto my wheels when I'm doing a fat burnout. And then when everything gets up to temperature, then I can have some really good traction. At least that's the idea. I've never actually tried this before and it actually might make things worse. And that pump is <laughs> very, very cheap because I tried another pump, uh, I actually bought two. And then the other one uh, straight up just crapped out. It worked for like five seconds and then it made a really bad smell. So that's what happens when you buy pumps for like $10. I know you guys wanna see this thing in action. All right, so let's turn this to the accessory position. And this, yep. So this is a switch panel, a custom switch panel. And uh, I put in some buttons, uh, which kind of sort of correspond to uh, what's going on here. We have our nitrous purge, which I haven't done yet. We have our light bar, which uh, is gonna look awesome. We have our rear, which is the uh, pimp juice. And then we have the underglow, which is, well, I didn't have enough time for underglow. Let's try this guy, light bar. And, <laughs> oh yeah, that looks amazing. So not only do I have that, but it has different sort of flashes and patterns and uh, I can honestly do whatever I want. Now I didn't want to do red and blue. I wanted to do white and orange because this is a roadside assistance vehicle after all. I don't want to pretend like I'm police or something. But another thing that I did was in here. So in there is a new module. And if I press this button, oh yes. <laughs> Now it's official. But speaking of official, we still do have to put that nitrous purge in. I did a little bit more weight reduction. You can see that I took the cowl off and the windshield wipers and they are right there. And that's where they're gonna stay. So I mounted the nitrous purge right here. I just have to run the lines and then do the wiring and then we should be good to go.
All right, well, it is almost 7 a.m. I have not slept, but I'm very excited because this car is done. Actually, it's a few hours away from getting picked up to go to Detroit, and I actually have to catch a flight to Detroit in a few hours. But this is the moment of truth. I want you guys to see this for the first time. So first we have our light show. Bam, and bam. Now we have intimidator mode. Yes! Yeah. Okay, so it is the day of the event, actually the day before the event, because we have to do a bunch of press conference stuff, and I am here at the M1 Concourse, and this is the place where Roadkill Nights is about to take place. Now, um, my car's not here, and the reason why my car's not here is because uh, the shipper that was supposed to take my car, we had this planned out weeks in advance, uh, basically got the worst luck in the world. Uh, his truck broke down, then he tried to get another truck from the dealership, they sold that, and then he tried to get a rental truck, and then that wasn't happening, and then he tried to get a different trailer, tried to use my trailer, then his truck like just broke down altogether. And what I had to do was something very, uh, sort of desperate. The car should have been here yesterday. What I had to do was I had to take a shipper from Florida to Atlanta where Jared, Jared, like the MVP of my channel, he took the car from Atlanta and he's currently driving here. He picked the car up at midnight last night and it is currently 9.30 in the morning and he's due here at about 11. Now, I am like on pins and needles. I am super just like, I I'm, I'm a little bit stressed out because all the other cars are here and we got Weston over here. You wanna go for a ride? Let's go for a ride. I have no idea whose golf cart this is. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. So Hold this on. is this is Weston Champlin. Oh uh, definitely uh, check out his channel. But uh, you got an awesome car. Uh, my car's not here yet. So uh, when I'm your car gets here, it's gonna be awesome though. Like that thing is orange. It's a freaking recovery vehicle. That thing is gonna be ready to party. Maybe. And when I blow my car up, you can pull me back. Let's head on down this way. Okay. Hi, Tavarish. How you doing? <laughs> Good, dude. Um, so you, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, I mean this truthfully, right? This is how you usually set up when you're about to insult someone. Yeah. Dude, you're not a muscle car guy, per se. Oh, no, no, not, not really at all. So I didn't understand what muscle cars were about. I never even drove a Hellcat until they just delivered one to my shop. And honestly, I fell in love almost immediately. It, it's such, it makes so much sense and it makes no sense at all at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So talk to us about the build because again, you come from a supercar world. So how were you able to take that knowledge and turn it into something that's hopefully gonna go real fast heading down Woodward Avenue? So honestly, I, I knew that on Woodward Avenue, it really isn't a, a well-prepped track. These cars sort of need that. And everybody else here, I don't want to put the, give, a, give anything away, but I know that they're probably going to go for more power. I didn't do that. I did something else. And I, I think everybody will sort of appreciate what I did because uh, I, I like to be unique, um, so, sort of, maybe, I don't know. I, honestly, maybe everybody else did exactly the same thing and I'm just, I'm just talking out of school. Well, let's find out. What do you say we pull the cover back on your car and show it to everybody? Okay, let's do that. Let's, okay, but fine, let's do it, let's do it. Except that. Let, let's just pull the cover off, let's just, let's just do it. <laughs> You're like, so. <laughs> so I have done nothing. So this is a bone stock car. In, okay, uh, I, that's, that's not exactly true. This is not my car. My car actually got here when the CEO was talking, and it's right back there. This is a stunt car, you know, like, just, just so I'm not standing next to a Wonder Woman mobile like the invisible car. This is, for all intents and purposes, a very nice Hellcat but my Hellcat is over there, which I have worked on, and it has a very nice livery, it has some more power adders, it has some weight reduction, and I'm very excited to get it down the track. You guys, his eyes have been this big ever since he first got his chance to put his foot down on the right pedal. I, I, I'm excited to see, have you, have you, have, have you made a, a pass yet on that thing at all? Have you done any testing since you've got yours actually done? So, uh, the answer is no, no, uh, no. 
Uh, no, definitely not. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say that I'm with uh, Eric here, where you know we're just gonna run what we brung. It's street racing, you guys. Tavarish, he's our guy right here, and that's not his car. His is over there. What happened was. Uh, Car shippers are just, it, it's, it's so, such a rich industry, you know, with, with people that are on time all the time. So uh, the, the tow truck actually broke down. There was a huge story there. But my friend Jared had to pick this up in Atlanta in the middle of the night yesterday, and he just drove it like 12 hours here. He had no sleep. He is absolutely the MVP. So the reason why the car is here is all because of him, and it's, it's right back there. I don't know if you guys can turn your cameras around or whatever. You'll see it at, at some point, but that's... Yeah, that, that's going to be fun. That's awesome. Right on. And just in the nick of time, my car is here because of this man right here. You're also wearing a shirt that is matching the car. I am, I'm really excited. Uh, how long have you been up? What time is it? 7 o'clock yesterday. Okay, 7 o'clock yesterday. In the morning. Okay, so and that's it's, it's it's many it's, hours. It is 2 o'clock hours. Okay, that's so. a, that's a lot of hours. Uh, so you need you need some sleep, my friend. Eventually, we got to get through tech, and there's things to sign and like stuff to do. So we'll okay. go to sleep eventually. So my car got here after a crazy, crazy. I, I I can't imagine the bad luck that we've had with shipping this car, but it finally got here just when it was right about too late. But it, it it's fine. It's here and it looks fantastic. So this is my car. And this is Weston Champlin's car. He has a twin turbo Hellcat and it has some interesting modifications. It looks really cool, like a fighter jet. We have Eric Malone's car, which has some interesting mods, uh, has some skinnies in the front and probably has some power adders. We have Throttle's car and they have done skinnies in the front and drag radials in the back. They have more power and nitrous and they've gutted their car. I don't think it's gonna help them much, but we have Alex Taylor's car, which is, uh, can you explain this? Can you, like, what's what's going on here? So it went for a lot of traction. That was our goal. That's, so, okay. <laughs> put simply. Uh-huh, that's that's a lot of traction. That's, when I look at that, I look at traction. Um, yeah. This is this is interesting. Uh, I, this is a ton of work. <laughs> it's a like, work. like, it's so insane. You know what's sad is like, it was like literally a month straight of work and it's gonna be over in a day. Yeah, it's like a roller coaster. You know, you, you wait for three hours, and then like ten seconds later, you'll be like, "All right, that was, that was cool." It's over. Yeah. It's over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I love it. It's gonna hurt my heart to see it go away. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it'll live on in something else. I mean, the the parts are still gonna be available there. Yeah, I just I don't think anyone realizes because we didn't realize how hard it is to lower a Challenger that low with that big a tire. Well, I mean, it's easy when you take a sawzall and you literally take all of the metal yeah. past this point. But then up to here, we had to cut the trans tunnel and build a whole new trans tunnel too. Okay. Yeah, it got complicated quick. <laughs> so if you just took like a race chassis and then put like a Challenger skin on it, that's exactly yeah. what this is. Pretty much, that's what she did. Yeah. yeah. So I got Eric Eric Malone yes. with uh, with you. you have a full interior here. Full you got interior. you got AC. AC everything. It's stock. I'm gonna be comfortable. I'll run them. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm gonna be uh, comfortable. Okay, all right. Th this has turned into the guys versus Alex. Right. You're I, exactly right. I think. How did that happen? I think. How did that happen? I think it's everybody Lord, versus everybody. I can't even win over here. I pull it up. She pull up. Imagine how you're gonna feel when you spent all this time and money and you get beat by a bone stock car. Hmm? It'll be. Uh, it'll. Yeah, that that'll be. It'll be upsetting. Okay, I am in line for just kind of a test and tune pass. This is not for any sort of stakes. I'm not going against any of the other racers, um, but I just want to see what the car can do because everyone here has had problems with traction. So some people can hook up, but it's like one out of five people are hooking up. The track is very, very lightly prepped, and I'm super excited to see how this car does. Now, Jared has a camera. Uh, so he'll be able to see what I look like from outside. It's probably not gonna be very fast. I'm not gonna give it a ton of power, but I wanna see how this thing launches. Maybe I'll do launch control, maybe I'll do a line lock, um, and then leave it in automatic just to see what I need to dial down or maybe dial up because uh, this track seems like it could be anyone's race. So here's my order of operations. I'm gonna go chiller, then line lock to do a burnout, and then I'm gonna do launch control, and then I'm gonna launch and see what this thing does. Okay, 
So, so I left it when I was over there. I turned the car off, and when I turned it back on, I didn't realize that it goes back into auto. So I had it in track, and when I tried to do the burnout, the traction control came on. It was like, blah, blah, blah. and then it like it just canceled uh, canceled the line lock. And I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll just go. Well, I'll tell you what. Of everyone that's run, despite how much that's not what you wanted, that was the cleanest A to B pass of all the competitors. It felt good. Like it the car next really to you good. had twice the horsepower, so that's why it was so much faster. But you spun the tiniest bit, and then it just went. Oh yeah, yeah. So I mean, maybe, maybe it's just <laughs> like I leave it in auto and drive. I, I don't know, maybe he just uh, he just spun or something, but uh, this thing hooked pretty good. Um, it did, you, it didn't launch 22? I did 22. It, 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 it spun a little bit. Um, honestly, I think auto, like just having it on auto is a ticket. Like it just, it bogs a little bit and then it just goes. So, I'm good, 22, I'm good like how many seconds has it been? Because you it's, want it, just it a seems, little. It's, it seems slower here. Okay. I, I might put it to Drop two. Drop it to two? To two, yeah. Because we only had one more test pass, so that's where we wanted to kind of go above, because we knew 18 was good. Can we do another one? very surreal i've been watching roadkill for i mean since the first one yeah since, since before since the first one, one yeah yeah and and to, to be able to do this is is pretty crazy so i mean whatever happens i don't care if i win or lose this is this is a bucket list item and you, hopefully they invite me to the next one but even if they don't this is a this is an insane like you are just gone <laughs> Ahead of she me was in another, feet. another area code, but that's okay. Yeah. So how do, how do you feel? Honestly, if she would like, if we started a <laughs> hundred feet, but in, in between, if she started halfway the track. You're gonna ask for half a track? I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna ask for half the track. So 250 feet. I'll start 250 feet. And, yeah. No, no, come on, no. come on, come on. It's fair. It's only fair. You know? Fair is a very relative term. I know. <laughs> So that was some of the most fun I've ever had in a car. This car is insane. I can't imagine that Dodge would make this car and just sell it to regular people and uh, give one to me for some odd reason. But we didn't win, but it's okay because we had the most heart. Actually, here. You did a damn good job. At, I, I think you did a damn good job, my friend. No, no, dude, you did a damn good job. So do you know what the difference is between you and me and time? What's that? It was 0 0.06 seconds. Is that big? Point z yes, it's big. It's 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 you know point zero six. That's oh. like that. It's yeah. like it's it's no time at all. Yeah. So I mean, this was a close race. It was it wasn't it, it wasn't was, a close it was race. A close between, race. Yeah. That one they spent yeah. they spent a lot of time on that car. But the thing about it is that both of these are street cars. Your car still has AC. My okay. My car is bone stock. Yeah. My car has zero modification. That nitrous is just a foot. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's literally just a just a show car. The thing about it is you made it really good for that though. Yeah, it's fine. And, and I, also like even like what, what we did here, I mean we pushed 
like supposedly it'll make like 1150 horsepower, mm -hmm. 1150 the wheel right now with the tune stuff. You so. went if you hooked up, it would you were past you were past me so much, but you, it was just it was just too much for the for the tires to handle. No, well, and I got a really skinny tire. I I couldn't find any tire. Yeah. So I only got a 10 inch wide tire. Everybody else has got like a 10 and a half, 11 inch. Yeah. Tire. I mean. 15 inch tire. <laughs> yeah. You know? How fun was this? How Dude, this was a blast. I will say we didn't win, but uh, we had a lot of fun. And Absolutely. <laughs> Dude, I got, a lot, I got a lot of sun. Uh, Jared got I a lot do. of sun. Jared is <laughs> like is like apple red right now. His, his I, I skin was, is about to be yeah, I was this color. To match my shirt. Yeah, so Jared's going to need to get some sunscreen. I'm going to need to get some. Uh, some. I, I, I mean, I, I have adrenaline pumping through my veins right now. I'm going to need some rest. But this was a very, very fun day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. So this car in front of me is my 2017 Dodge Charger. It has a V6, it cost me $10,000, and it stinks so bad that my eyes hurt. But over here is something very, very special. This is my 2021 Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye, and this was given to me by Dodge, by the company that makes this car for Roadkill Nights. Now, this is obviously not stock, at least it's not stock looking, but the reason why I have two chargers is because Dodge told me that I had to give this car back. So not really in this configuration. You see, Dodge told me that this car was a pre-production crusher car, meaning that after I was done with it, it would be crushed. This brand new car was gonna be crushed. I know, it makes me sad too. But they told me that I could have the drivetrain, the Hellcat Red Eye, 797 horsepower drivetrain and everything surrounding it. And everything surrounding it was sort of like a vague thing for me because, I mean, everything surrounding it means I can have the entire car, right? So honestly, I took that as I could have everything off this car that makes a Hellcat a Hellcat. All I needed was a donor car. And that's why I got this little stinker over here. So in this episode, we are going to be putting everything from this car into this car and I'm going to have a street legal Hellcat essentially for the price of a Beater V6. All right, so we need to get into the action really quickly and in order for us to take this car apart, we need to move it back a little bit because there's actually like a little bit of a hot zone in my shop right here. Uh, I am stalling for time because I don't want to get in that car. It smells really, really badly. But let's do it. Oh boy. Okay, this is for YouTube. Uh, oh. Oh, oh, this is, come on, can you please start, please, please start in the first try. Oh, come on, please. Please, car. Pretty, please. Wait, wait. I know your battery's not great, just... Okay, yeah. First first try. I'm so glad that nothing in here is being kept. And there's a there's a nasty clunking sound coming from the front. Okay. Jared help. We could just make a fan. What? We could just put the you know put a fan in and blow 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 to fix the hot air that way. Jared, it smells hor yeah, please. I have never experienced a smell that made my eyes hurt. Yeah. Like it, it's special. It's. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we let's, have let's... an order of operations for this car now. And um, we have to do essentially double work to both of these cars. So I made a little list. So we're gonna do doors off, interior out, AC vacuum, bodywork off, on the lift, exhaust, drive shaft, front subframe, rear subframe, and remove from the lift. So uh, that's a big, that's a big job. So that is like one half. Yeah. Because we then have to do this and then we have to reinstall things. <laughs> uh, and how much time do we have? Uh, three days, give or take, because of all the other filming we have to do. So basically we have to have this. Well, this is Friday. It's about like 1.30, 2 yeah. p.m., something like and that. And we need really to drive this off the lift Monday to stay on schedule. 
So I think, yeah, I mean, I honestly, I think we get it done in the weekend. This I, is, I, I believe, this we is can. bolt on, dude. Like this is no problem. It's just lots and lots of bolts. So you know how you always get a lot of work done in a short time. Montage. So there's been a little bit of work done yeah that's uh it that's, smells so much better in here but out there it doesn't smell that much better over here stinky. or over there that's a lot of it's a lot of parts we'll have to take care of that soon but i wanted to go over if you're ever working on a car to this point one it's like money cheat code oh yeah yeah i mean there's there has to be like three dollars three dollars i was gonna say 73 cents there, yes. there's a lot of quarters but there's a lot of crevices mm -hmm. in these cars and you want to make sure like reach in and get the quarters mm -hmm. or it's going to just rattle and uh it's a good place to store these 
<laughs> that, that's for Tyler. That's uh, <laughs> for his diesel there. Yeah, that's for Tyler and, and his and his diesel. So that's <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> listen, somebody was having fun. Actually, th this wasn't used, so no, it, it wasn't. <laughs> Maybe they, they and if it did, there's it. a bunch of holes in it. So. Oh boy! Oh, that's <laughs> that's the honey boo. I got you. <laughs> I'm trying to. Trying to trap someone. Don't do that. What we're doing now is uh, we have all the harnesses uh, kind of pulled back a little bit and we have to take out this HVAC system because even though this is going to be essentially the same as what's in the Hellcat, this is just full of cigarette ash and just nastiness and we want to take everything out and since we have a brand new car there, we're just going to put everything brand new there. There is a crazy flicker coming from this right now. Oh, is it this light here? Yep. Just oh, turn. yeah, that fluorescence almost gone. Okay, so. turn that. There we go. Okay. So this is uh, going to have to come out. But before we do that, we have to use an AC machine to take all the refrigerant out of the AC system. Then we have to bleed the coolant because there's also coolant that goes through the heater core. And then we can start taking this stuff out. And then we'll probably take the car outside, clean everything here, and uh, make sure the metal is nice and clean. And then... Uh, we can do all the really interesting stuff, which is like mechanical. Yeah, drop all the subframes front and back. So all this will be is a blank slate, a bare shell mm -hmm. with no bodywork, no drivetrain, and ready to receive the fun. Ab absolutely. We're we'll, we'll need a couple more Magnums to fit that Hellcat engine in there. Though. I think, I think uh, somebody was ready to receive fun in this car. So now comes the moment of truth of what to do with all of this and this and that. What do you think? I think the doors we could probably put on like Facebook Marketplace and get a couple hundred dollars for, and we could probably spend two hours pressure washing those to get twenty dollars. So let's take a look at what we have right here. This is a husk of what used to be a Charger V6. Nobody really cares about these cars, but I did, because now this is gonna be a top of the line Hellcat Red Eye, and I can't wait. Now, Jared had to go home, but let's see what he did here. Let's just go over what, what is actually on the car. It's nothing but just frame. There's a little bit of sound deadening here and heat insulation, but, Coming back here, I mean, everything just drops out. This was a little bit sketchy. I mean, these springs are, they're quite springy. So up here, we're not gonna have to do any modification at all. The only modification we're gonna do is back here because, well, actually on the other side as well, because what we've learned is that 
The quarter panel is actually different. The quarter panel for the wide body actually has little cut out holes here. So we're gonna have to either cut those holes out or replace the entire quarter panel. I'm not sure what we're gonna do, but we have an entire donor car because, well, that's what Dodge gave us. So this is gonna be awesome. Hi everyone. How are you? I'm good, it's been a while. Are you ready? Smell cat time. Yeah. We need to do a lot of work to this car. I, I think we should probably just get like straight to the action. Yeah. Oh, you want me to get the other car? Yeah. Yeah, one is. second. Okay. There you go. Left the other car. What is it? Where, where's the car? You left Jack and I alone and said, try to do some work and we got bored. So uh, Dodge has the car and this is what's left. Is the car really gone? It's gone. It's. You're, you're, you're being serious right now. The, yeah. car, the car's gone. It's, it's gone. Well, we have three pieces like this. So where's all the, all the parts and stuff? Well, some of them are in it, and then the rest are waiting for you to put in. Dude, I mean, okay, so you did a ton of work while I wasn't here. I was, by the way, this is not like a bit or anything. So I was, I was away editing. Um, did you get any of the work, like, on camera? I, I didn't get any of it. I got all of it. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs>
Well, okay, now I know a lot more about this car and what it needs and what is about to go into it. Look at this thing. I'm a little bit mad at you, honestly. I mean, like, what? dude, it's, this is a lot of work. I mean, look at look at that pile of parts. We have to go through and see what, like, It, it what was a whole is. lot of work, but if we didn't get it done, you wouldn't have any of this. Right, but because here's, but here's the, the thing. The said we're coming for it. So this, I did this for you. I did this to help you. If you didn't do this, you wouldn't have this beauty. Well, honestly, well, I, I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much. <laughs> I had to go and edit, and while I was away editing, uh, Jared and Jack, Jack uh, decided to just remove everything because you can't just leave people alone and expect them not to. Yeah, you can't leave two professional mechanics alone with tools and nothing to do. You are not a professional mechanic anymore, okay? Now I you are- I one on YouTube. Yes. Which you... means I'm like doubly, triple certified. Yeah, I mean, you're- I think all your professional credentials just go out the window the second you make a YouTube channel. I'm so impressed that engines are like clean coming out of the car. They don't have oil leaks or nothing. This is a like essentially a brand new engine. And look how look how chunky this transmission is. It is insanely big. First time you've heard that. <laughs> think about what the transmission handles. Like they kept making the engines more and more powerful, mm -hmm. and that's been the same transmission behind all of it. So well, it is sort of, yes, yeah, so they they did some modification to this transmission. This is actually called the Torque Flight 845RE, and this is not the same transmission behind the V6 or even the V8s. These have different clutch packs, and uh, this is definitely beefed up to take the massive amount of torque that comes from this engine. But if you just look around this thing, it is really big. Like, it is quite gargantuan. How much do you think this whole thing weighs? Uh. I wouldn't be surprised if this whole combo wasn't like 1,100 pounds. Your transmission table, lift table, does not like it. Oh, no, no. It, it doesn't go up, and if you just hint at the lever to ask it to go down, like, it's down. No, that's 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 it. That's all she goes. So over here, we have uh, just an exploded car. We got doors, we got bumpers, headliners, seats, and uh, a bunch of stuff that probably has to go in in a certain sequence, right? Uh, for the most part. The next step is the engine has to go in and then we can work on dash. There are so many coolers on the front of this engine. The cooling pack between the radiator, AC condenser, intercooler cooler, the oil cooler, mm -hmm. the, like there's so much. So that's one of the cooler packs. Yeah. Freddie's walking over. So you have radiator, AC and trans cooler. This radiator is just for your intercooler. And then you have an oil cooler there. Mm -hmm. And then I don't remember where we put it, but somewhere is the AC chiller where the car uses the AC system to cool the water even more for the intercooler system. So you make tons of power. Yeah, that's and actually so when you, when you go racing, uh, usually what happens is these cars get heat soaked, meaning that the supercharger and everything just gets super, super hot. And then you have uh, super hot intake air temperatures and that creates knock and detonation and all that stuff that you don't want. What this car has is, is an AC chiller and that uses the refrigerant to cool down that intake charge. So you actually can cool down a lot, lot faster and you can make consecutive runs. That's actually what I did for the Roadkill Nights. Yeah, just uh, in between you sit there and run the AC and it drops the temperature. Cause again, it, it gets the water well below ambient, so. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's a great system and especially coming from a OEM manufacturer, this is like next level. All right, so let's, let's just put this stuff in and then start working on the interior and getting this car together. By the way, What's what's up? What's up with this? What's up with uh, the lack of glass? What, yeah, what happened? Well, we got rid of the front glass because it was delaminating and didn't have all of the provisions for the new charger or for the new uh, electronics and rearview mirror. Okay. Uh, back glass. Um, yeah, yeah. That's. I wanted to ask you about that because uh, <laughs> what's well, like this? This seems maybe excessive. Well, we had to cut it because for some reason with this particular audio package, maybe there's a way to do it that we couldn't figure out or find online, but this particular bolt and these screws are completely concealed. The, the glass basically sits like this. Mm -hmm. So like if we're looking there, so how do you undo that screw? 
I mean, you take out the glass. You have to take out the glass. <laughs> and we were like, oh, we'll leave the speakers for now. But there's wiring harnesses that go under the speakers yep. that you couldn't remove until it was out. So um, Okay, so this is all in there. And this is OEM. And this is the, the 2021 Red Eye uh, Harman Kardon system. So hopefully that all works. You mean the pink eye? We'll get to that later. All right, let's get to work. <laughs> So we have made some progress here. Uh, did you put in paint calipers? Yes, you, you were insistent that the calipers had to be painted. So now Jack is over there getting ready to paint your brake calipers. Okay, so. Which they, it didn't need it because the fronts are raw silver. The, mm -hmm. fun, the fun parts of being a development car, they don't quite finish everything on it. <laughs> no, no, the, we found actually a lot of things that weren't finished, uh, namely the exhaust. I think the exhaust is a development uh, for this platform, so it's yeah. like... There's a lot of loose hangers, just some things not even hooked up, period, and there's just lots of weird welding in it that mm -hmm. I'm fairly certain they were using to tune how 2021s sound, so... Yeah, this one actually sounds really good, so... Uh, engine in. Yeah, that's uh, definitely in. Boom. All right, steering column in. We haven't done that. Dash yeah. in. Whoa, okay. Oh, drive stuff. shaft. Or drive shaft. Okay. Yeah. Drive shaft. Exhaust. And uh, dress out engine bay. I mean, other than that's, wiper cowl, that's fairly dressed like, out. Everything is in there, but the wiper. Cowl. I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just do that. All right. Uh, exhaust. Exhaust. Boom. And uh, um, well. And that's it. And it's and it's still a charger. No. So. Right. No, 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 I know what you're gonna do. You get to stop it. Thanks, I hate it. Okay guys, so now is the moment of truth. This thing is together. Well, it, it's not really together in the bodywork sense of things, but it's together in terms of the engine and transmission and everything really. We have the brakes, we have the tires, and we have the wheels. You can see that we still have the narrow body on here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks a little Daytona USA-ish. We don't have any interior other than the center console and the dash, but everything here should work. I guess everything's plugged in, right? Yeah, it's everything that we can plug in is plugged in except for, I think, lights and the sonar sensors because, mm -hmm. well, we didn't put those body parts on yet. Okay, uh, so, uh, one thing that's really interesting is how much more space this thing takes up. It is insanely huge. I mean, the V6 in here, it was like up to here. You could probably have a party between the frame rails and the engine. I mean, you could really land a plane in this engine bay before, but now you can't You can't like stick a pinky in there. I mean, it, this you can't get to There's anything. There's no room. Jack could stand in front of the engine before. Yeah. Yeah, can, yeah. You, can you do that now? 
Come on, Jack. Like, get in here. Get, you, no. No? We have everything plumbed in. The only thing we don't have is the AC because the AC is a... <sighs> the new 12337. Yeah, so it's a R... 1234YF, I think, or 1243YF. I don't know what the firing order is, but um, I don't have the fittings for it and I definitely don't have the machine for it. So this is not gonna have AC for a little while until I can probably get to a dealership and have them just redo yeah. the system. But we, we had gauges, so we pulled the vacuum on it and it's not leaking. So we know everything is at least put together right. Well, um, if we go to the dealership, they're going to say that, listen, that uh, we can't touch this car. It's it's clearly not stock. It's a 2016. And, a 2017, okay? And, I'm sorry. Yeah, and, you and better we'll just, be sorry. How and we'll dare just you? tell them it is the way that it is because it is the way that it is. We had to find uh, different coolants because uh, this one is pink and that one is purple and uh, never the two shall meet. We got new oil, uh, got a new oil filter, all OEM, and this should fire into life, right? Yes. Did you get the power steering fluid? See, Jack, uh, Jared makes jokes like this um, all the time. So he knows full well that this car has electric power steering. But he thinks I don't know that. I didn't know that. Okay, so here are the keys. Make sure you use the red key. It starts up better that way. Yeah, the red key is for all the power. This is for uh, top speed runs uh, against Bugatti Veyron. So, um, well, we got to unlock it because there's, there's no way I can get in the car otherwise. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Is the battery connected? No. <laughs> we should probably do that, right? How are we going to get into the battery compartment? I mean, the trunk is just inaccessible from here. There is no way we can get... Why does it still smell in here? Because this is the smell cat pink eye. Yeah, and, and no, I, and, I know we did that for a bit, but like, it's, it actually does smell kind of... I didn't know that metal could just stink. Yep. Oh no, I'm stuck. Please, help get me out. I'm so clumsy. Any way I go, I just, I can't get myself free. I don't know. What do you think of that? I don't know what to think of this. Help me, step bro. <laughs> what do you think, Freddy? You and I have done a fair number of first starts on a project, right? Yeah. Do we want to let the new Jack push uh, a button? You push that button. No one can... <laughs> Remember, always full throttle your cold engine. That was 2,000 RPM. That was not... <laughs> So what's pouring out? Because that was way too easy. Well, number one, we don't have uh, our steering fluid all over the floor right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have much uh, fuel. The fuel is low. Uh, airbag needs service because there's no seats or yeah, anything the seats here. Aren't in it. Uh, oh, and the red key. Yeah. So party key. So I mean, it worked. It doesn't have any check engine lights. Nothing's like super angry. Seems like it's idling okay. It smells really good. Yeah. As far as like combustion process. That that went like deceptively really well. Yeah, I call that a win. All right, so. The, uh, the only things we did to prepare is we key cycled a couple times for fuel leaks. And uh, that works apparently. Okay, so uh, well, now comes the body work. Yeah, our job's done. My job begins. Why aren't you done yet? I was done yesterday. Jack's so tomorrow. quick, you can't even tell when he finishes. Jack, um, how long do you think the body work's gonna take in this? Two, three, two, three. <laughs> what? Two, three, two, three. <laughs> what? Two, three days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, so we have this thing outside and Jack is wasting no time with getting this all taped up and why are you taping this up, Jack? Just so we keep the dust out of it. I mean, we're gonna make a lot of dust because we're gonna have to sand a lot of crap. They got lots of filler on that side. So just taking that off is gonna be fun. So there's there's filler over here. You're saying that this is not stock, right? This is not how it came from the factory? It's almost OEM. It's almost OEM. I am not going there. If you take a look over, over here, 
you can see that there's like a ding right here. The entire panel is wavy and both quarters have been painted. So you see just crap in the paint. There's fish eyes and all that stuff. So for most people, this would be probably okay. I mean, like from back here, if you just like, don't look at that, this is all right. It's not too bad. But fortunately we are not most people, are we Jack? No, we're not. I'm not. You're I'm, not most people. I'm, I'm a little above average. Oh, okay, Mr. Fancy Pants body man here. So uh, we are going to, well, Jack is uh, about to do his body work magic to this and over there. And uh, he also did something up here. This is from the old charger. And this had a shark fin antenna. And we just have to figure out where this hole goes and then that can go just like a oh, yeah. Now back here is something really, really special. And this was taken off the 2021 Red Eye. And you'll notice that this is a narrow body, but it's not staying that way for long because we got these guys. So Jack, can you tell us a little bit about what I'm holding in my hand, this very sharp piece of metal? Uh, it used to be part of the wide body for the Hellcat. Okay. So we're just gonna take this bracket we're gonna trim it off on this side. We're gonna use this as a template mm -hmm. and set it up on here, cut the same design out, and then just slide this in, weld it in, and you'll have a wide body uh, smell cap. That's right. So what this essentially does is allows us to bolt on our over fenders. Now there is an over fender kit for these cars that just, I mean, it does essentially the same thing, but I wanted to make sure that we were as OEM as possible. So we're taking, we're just tracing this and then transferring this over uh, and then cutting this. And then hopefully there's enough, like is the structure on the inside the same, you think? So instead of this one right here, the way they put this on is this piece is welded to the, the skin, mm -hmm. to this piece essentially. But on this type of quarter panel, it has what's called a rolled hem flange. So it just, rolls underneath like mm -hmm. that and it's glued across here. Okay. So I'll grind that off and then once I clean that up, I'll just kind of set this in place and then weld through primer, weld it into place and it'll be just like it was a Hellcat. Okay, awesome. Uh, it's not a problem that there's a uh, gas filler neck right there, right? No, just keep the extinguisher close by. So you have been a busy boy, haven't you? It's getting dark, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> very busy. So um, what are we looking at here? This is an OEM conversion to a 2017 Charger V6. Uh, it's about to become a wide body. Yeah, so only thing I have left to do is plug weld some of the holes and clean this up. And then once we're done doing all our filler work, we'll seam seal and prime and it should be good to go. 
it should look like OEM and fit like OEM. So we put the door on just so we made sure everything fits up. And it's really, really easy to put doors on on this car. It's just like four bolts and that's it. Yeah, four bolts and you're good to go. And uh, that's nice because it makes it a lot quicker to fit. So mm -hmm. don't fiddle around with it too much. So you're using a MIG welder, just a regular uh, Lincoln Pro MIG uh, on 110. So it's just yeah. like whatever comes out of the, the yeah. taps. This is sheet metal, so it's not going to be like a you're not welding anything really structural mm -hmm. you know not, it's not like it's a, only the side of the car i mean come on yeah somebody's gonna be screaming in the comments it's a unibody car the entire body is a structure that's true and mm -hmm. they would be correct but we're doing this anyway so <laughs> <laughs> Okay guys, so as you can tell, we got the factory wide body piece installed. The next step is repairing this here. So as you can tell, they welded in a patch panel. They didn't do a good job fixing the holes that they created when they pulled the, uh, the panel. Um, you have a deep spot right there. But what I'm thinking is I might wanna take this panel out and re-weld it back up. Uh, we'll see. I'm trying to figure out what's gonna be the best route because I don't want this thing to have issues again and I want it to be a little cleaner than that, so stay tuned. So take a look at this. This looks uh, this looks pretty insane. What do you say? It's freaking awesome. Really? It's awesome. So come closer. Let's uh, let's talk about what you did because I leave Jack alone and he just goes nuts. I told you that I only wanted one dent pulled out, and look what you did to my beautiful car. It was one big dent, so I figured just fixing that one dent. The whole good. car was one big dent? Yeah, it was pretty bad. Okay, so <laughs> what did you uh, actually do? So we converted it to a wide body. We got all the wide body uh, brackets welded in, put in place, all the body work from the welding and everything done to mm -hmm. about right there. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, we repaired the really bad body work. It's just loose right now, so obviously that's why it doesn't line up but we repaired the really bad bodywork that was here and it was pretty much all the way to about here, I wanna say. Mm -hmm. So with the welding warpage and having to repair up to here, we repaired pretty much from here all the way to here. Mm -hmm. We repaired several spots on top. Yeah, cause this was all wavy and stuff, right? Yeah, it was a, in a rap video, so. Do you know which rap video? No, but you know what goes on in rap videos. What happens? I think I'll get you demonetized if I say. It came out really nice and honestly, I can't wait to see this thing painted. It's gonna be badass. Yeah. So right now we are on the way, well, we're about to uh, put the car on the trailer to be on the way to uh, the paint shop, which is owned by, well owned, not not owned, but- uh, He works there. Yeah, your friend Luis works there. And uh, this is in a pinch. This is literally like the last day of the year when we can do this. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, just coming around the car, everything else has been, I mean, it hasn't been like super prepped. We haven't sanded this down, but 
but it's a brand new panel from a brand new car. So this would just need to be scuffed and shot. Um, everything lines up the way it should. Everything's bolted on uh, except for the doors, but we got some straps and yeah, that'll be all right. Now all I have to do is get in the car, put it on the trailer, and then uh, we'll take you to the paint shop where everything will get painted one color and hopefully we don't just leave tools around that can here you go it would have caught into the back of the car that's true it would yeah the back of the car would have caught it or it would have went out into the highway or something maybe like a light bar yeah yeah exactly like a light bar yep Okay, so we are in a parking lot full of sort of destroyed cars, but the trailer is empty because the car is in here waiting to get its paint job. And this is gonna be a fairly quick one because we already did all the prep work. So all it has to do is go inside the booth. You can already see uh, Jack's friend Luis in there spraying away at something else. This thing is super easy to take apart. Like there's only like a few bolts holding this thing on, right? Yeah, like three bolts on each fender and a bolt on the bumper and the two hood hinge bolts and that's it. Hopefully when we line everything up, all the panel gaps should be okay. I know from the factory, they actually weren't that good. They're average at best. I mean, the fitment is, is okay, but we're gonna get them better than OEM. Better than OEM. That's right. We're gonna build it better. Okay, so the smell cat is at the paint shop and getting ready to be painted. So now we have all of the plastics done. So what's going on, Lewis? What are we doing? Um, exactly what you said. I, I wanted to get some movement on this. So we have the inside of the hood prep um, and then all the plastics. So what we basically did was clean them, sand them, and, and throughout the whole process is the cleaning process. So after I sanded them, I like to do a wet scuff, clean at the same time, mask off whatever I have to, and now everything's in the booth. Awesome, let's get it.
Well, here it is, guys, the finished product. Lewis came in and, you know, he did a little bit of the, you know, a little bit like that, right? Right. That's all that ever is, you know, quick wrist. <laughs> um, but uh, seriously, from prepping outside, again, I, I keep on saying it, it's a constant cleaning. In here, cleaning, anti-static treatments, because um, these are all plastic parts except for the hood. But right after all that was done, it's a quick tack and then a sealer. And what I love about the sealer, and I was able to even make it more of a ground shape required for this color. Um, but that sealer also has a flex additive, adhesion coder, so it's awesome. It came on with the color, and then a quick clear that just makes it have that nice gloss. Awesome, man. I gotta say one thing. You are one of my best friends, but you are also one of the best painters that I've ever worked with, and I've been very privileged to work with good people in my career, but I gotta say you are one of the best, bro, and this turned out phenomenal. Look at that shine. Okay, guys, so we got the sun gun out. Lewis is gonna show you guys what this thing is gonna look like in the sun. This color is called Go Mango Pearl. So you can see those pearl flakes kind of shining off. This thing is gonna absolutely pop in the sun. There we go. And just like that, it is all one color and it looks fantastic. I cannot thank Lewis enough and I also can't thank Jack enough because uh, this was a little bit more work than you thought, didn't you? Well, yeah. well, this was a little bit more work than you thought, right? Well, technically it, you said, how long is it gonna take? And I said, about, you know, three days. Uh-huh. And uh, it took two weeks, but I mean, <laughs> You know, well, it was like three days in between those two weeks, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I can still write that as a title of my video? A majority, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's like technically correct. Technically. Okay, cool. So you already explained to people what you did here. Uh, you had to sand everything down, you had to prep it, and then uh, paint, and then some buffing and denibbing and all that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, so we prepped all the surfaces, we got them ready for paint, and uh, Lewis came in, did his magic, you know, a little bit of paint, and then... Uh, <laughs> that's it, that's yeah, it, it's just, it's, you, know, <laughs> you know, that's that's all paint is, it's just a... <laughs> ask any painter, they're just gonna tell you, it's just, you know... It's just a little, a little bit, bit, yeah. No, but we had the dents all fixed, everything came out really nice, mm -hmm. uh, the car looks really good, man. Very satisfied with the, the finished product. And this is an OEM Dodge Color from a 2021 Hellcat Red Eye. Uh, this is actually Go Mango Pearl. And do you know what that is from, like that that name? It's Go Man Go. I, no. It's Go, Go Man, I mean, it just, it's... What is that from? It's not from it. I, I don't know if it's from something, but it's just Go Man Go, and it's also Mango. It's, it, it's just, you know, like go, go, because the car is fast. I want this car to look completely stock and ready to rock. So in the interior, um, well, we need a little bit of work. So I'm going to start putting this interior together, put the doors together, and then start working on the outside. And then we're going to have a Dodge Charger Hellcat Red Eye or a Smellcat Pink Eye that is completely 100% done. And it should only take like five minutes, right? Yeah, exactly. So let's skip to the time lapse and get it done.
So ladies and gentlemen, take a look at this. This went from a 2017 V6, completely base model, super haggard charger, and now it is a 2021 Hellcat Red Eye. Everything is new. It has a Go Mango Pearl paint job. It looks fantastic, especially out here in the sun. It, oh my goodness. This thing is my dream car. I, I can't tell you how good this feels. Like every angle is just perfect. This is the exact color I envisioned this car to be. It pops in the sunlight so, so much. And it has 800 horsepower and it's, it's perfect. This thing is absolutely perfect. And I have some people to thank. Uh, first of all, Jared and Louie, who did an awesome, awesome job on painting this car. But Jack, did a ton of work here. I mean, I, I helped put this thing together a little bit, but uh, I was mostly at home sort of editing and doing other stuff. And you guys really kind of knocked it out of the park, man. So man, it was, it was really fun to do. I had a great, great time doing it. And I really loved working on this car. So <laughs> it, was, it was really fun, it was really so, cool. So when you look at something like this, first of all, it's kind of crazy that Dodge would make like a rental car that <laughs> has 800 horsepower, but they made it. And I love that they have a sense of humor. I love that this is an actual color that you can order from the factory. And you know, you can just drive this thing with a driver's license. It's, it's, it's insane. One thing we have to do though, um, we should take it on a drive. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's a little cold, right? It, it'll get, we can warm up. We can warm up in the car and we can warm up something else. Yeah. Dude, you ready to go for a ride? Absolutely. Okay. Come on. Let's do a burnout. A what? <laughs> is, that, is that all you care about? Uh, there are things in life that I care about, and burnouts are one of them. Okay, so before the burnout, everything on this car was changed. So we have to make sure that like the alignment is all right. So can we just like make sure the car is driving first before we do any of that? Uh, all right. So it goes in a drive just fine. Let's put it into SRT mode. I don't know. Let's just get sport, see what happens. <laughs> you hear that supercharger? That is awesome. That manual. What I like is that it has a lot of one torque. <laughs> 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 that was so awesome. Oh, was great. This thing dances around a little bit. That was great. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's check the alignment, shall we? That was 60 miles an hour, right? Yes. Wow. This thing is responsive. I like how the trans like shifts really sort of... Dude. Oh my God, this is gonna be an amazing daily. <laughs> <laughs> because everybody should daily get 800 horsepower car. How do they sell this to people? <laughs> Like, so this is an auto, like, uh, I have it in manual mode, but it's in essentially like the lowest, uh, you know, this is, this is for babies and like. <laughs> what? What is that? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's, we're going to get into trouble. So, uh. I just wanted to try one thing. What's that? <laughs> so this thing does burnouts pretty well. Ah, uh, good car. 
really, really good car. Hey, did you, uh, did, did you see my burnout? There's a little bit of smoke. A little bit. I think only one tire spun. I couldn't see anything in the car, like in the car. <laughs> All right, everyone. So it is exactly 8.09 a.m. on a Sunday, but I am here right in front of my shop and I am about to head to the tail of the dragon, which is around 500 miles away. Now I have to make it there, drive the dragon, and then come back for a thousand mile trip. It's probably gonna be a little bit more than a thousand miles. But if we take a look over here, I'm starting with 4,392 miles, and we wanna end with a little bit more than 5,392 miles. I feel really good. This car doesn't have any check engine lights, no warning lights whatsoever, but I did bring a scanner just in case something pops up and I didn't bring any tools. So if something actually does happen, I'm screwed. So uh, let's get on the road. So welcome everyone to what is the start of one of the most iconic, if not the most iconic curvy roads in America. This road is called Tale of the Dragon. If you guys don't know, it is 11 miles and 219 curves. So obviously I wanna take something that is the bones of a rental car with 800 horsepower and 305 wide tires all around. So uh, that should be nice and sketchy. Now, I've never driven this, but this is the back way of the Tale of the Dragon. Usually people go from the North Carolina side to the Tennessee side, but I'm going the other way. So right now, we should have a nice uphill section, and then there should be some really, really nice twisties to see if my suspension and my drivetrain, and honestly, if the car is just put together right. And that's a good sign. Motorcycles, high crash area. Good thing we're not a motorcycle. Oh yeah, next 11 miles, nothing but curves. Now I have this car in custom mode, which means that the powertrain is in full attack mode. But I have some pliability in the transmission and suspension and steering. Which means that on a road like this, where I'm not too familiar with it, they can let me get away with quite a bit. The power delivery on this car is absolutely spectacular. And what American car companies do, especially Dodge, is they don't really put a ton of effort into chassis tuning, but what they do is they give it a ton of mechanical grip. So those 305 tires, you can just load them up and they will they will reward you tenfold. All right, and the brakes. Oh, you know, I was worried about having not enough brakes up here. But honestly, I think those big six piston Brembos in the front, four piston rear are exactly what I needed. Now you can hear all my water bottles and stuff just flying around to the back of the car. So that should give you an idea of the kind of G-forces we're pulling here. Now I also wanted a front view of the dash so you can see that I truly don't have any check engine lights, any warning lights, and the car is doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Now, I am not on race pace. I'm not familiar with this road, and I am not a racing driver, but this is exactly what I want from this car. Just something that you can storm around. Oh yeah, the weekend in. Make that kind of noise. Oh my gosh. All right, tell you what, this is, this is actually impressive. This is extremely impressive. For a 4,600 pound car to do this and sound like this and perform this well. Especially one that I built in my garage with the help of a few good friends. I could not ask for more. This road though, oh yeah. 
Now with this challenge that I'm issuing to other YouTubers, it's not calling out because I think their work is subpar, no. I think it's because we can make all builds better. We can make sure all of our cars do things exactly like this. And when a rebuild is actually rebuilt, it can do everything the stock car can do, and then some. <laughs> I don't know if the designers of this car ever intended for this car to do this, but man is it good at it. And just in case any of you were doubting where I was, right here, I don't know if you can see this, it says Tail of the Dragon right there. And we have the Motorcycle Resort of Deals Gap. And I think this car has earned itself a full tank of gas. Because we are about to go straight home. All right, we are back at the shop after the drive. And actually this is a while later because, uh, let, me, let me show you something. Uh, so, if we take a look at how many miles there are here. All right. 7,271 miles. That is, uh, yeah, it's a little more than, than I bargained for, but uh, I've been driving this. And as you can see, no warning lights whatsoever. So it goes without saying that this is one of my favorite builds ever. Now I took it to the Tail of the Dragon and I've actually been driving it for 25,000 miles. This, I'm filming this a year and a half after I got this car and it hasn't skipped a beat. All I've had to do was change the oil and change the tires and the tires are expensive, but it's a Hellcat, and uh, well, that's sort of what it does. But I wanted to thank you guys for watching this entire build, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it, because I certainly enjoy this car, and you ain't seen nothing yet.